So friends, let's talk SHAP, Shapely Additive Explanation. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal tool if you want to understand what your complex tree-based, complex deep neural network models are telling you. Why are they making this prediction? Why? What features do they think is important and how? Uh, these models are so opaque, so dark, we have no idea what to do. Normally I would use XGBoost variable importance, but SHAP is uh, 10 times better. Um, if you like, for example, the, the regression coefficients that a model like a simple linear regression will give you, more of this will do that, more of this will do this. This is exactly what's going to do, but for complex models. And we're going to, I'm going to walk you through two simple um, examples using cap boost, one classification, one regression. And each time we'll end by looking at the SHAP plot and understanding what the model is doing. And you're going to be amazed by the clarity and the simplicity of this plot. I love it. Uh, welcome to the Viral Mail Show. My name is Manuel Amunatiki. Please sign up for my newsletter, upper left corner. You'll get uh, my updates on my videos, my books, and I often have some deals. Uh, I'll talk about this at the end of the video. Um, and this video is going Going to be classified under data science. Just click the data science button and you'll see all my other material on data science. Plenty of good stuff there. So all the code you need, everything you need is in the Jupyter Notebook extract. The link is in the description of the video. I get a lot of people say, hey, where the code is? The, the code is in the description. There's a link. Just click on it, copy it, and you'll get the extract here. The way it works, you basically copy and paste in a new Jupyter Notebook and you're good to go. Um, so here it is. Uh, let's get right down to business. You will need to install a few things, including Cap Boost if you haven't, and SHAP as well. So I'm not going to cover the installations. You're on your own there. Uh, everybody has different OSs, different versions of Python. It's a nightmare, but this stuff is so ubiquitous, you should be able to find it on the web easily. So I'm going to load a few libraries in memory. Um, just uh, I put a link here, a great link that talks about what SHAP does. Uh, let's just jump, jump to there. Here it is. Um, they go into a bigger explanation of it. It's open source, and it basically it's a, a module you tie into your other models. So it's independent of the model, which is nice because th there is kind of a it's kind of an audit. Uh, it's not you know the, it's not the model itself that can lie. This is a separate piece that can really audit the results. Um, it often does it by um, uh, taking your predictions, removing one variable, or changing one variable's value, and seeing how it affected the uh, the predictions, and kind of recalculating things. Doing that a lot of times, disturbing the predictions and eventually getting, you know, which were the ones that were more helpful to the model, less helpful, and to what degree, negative or positive. So shape is one. The other one is called lime, another one worthwhile to look at. So uh, we're, are we going to go practical hands-on here? So let me jump back to the code. Um, and the link to that, uh, to, to that uh, material is there. It's very interesting. So we are going to use, uh, let's start with a cat boost classifier also. I've done plenty of videos on cat boost. I love cat boost. It's so powerful because it kind of, allows you to not have to one hot cut in uh, your, your categories. You just give to Cat Boost, say, hey, tell, just tell Cat Boost this is a category, it'll take care of everything, unlike XGBoost. But XGBoost, I love it too. It does a lot of great things too, like, uh, you know, uh, modeling nulls and these kind of things. I really like XGBoost as well. Oh, by the way, SHAP comes out of the University of Washington. What else comes out of the University of Washington? XGBoost. I have no idea why, but I guess the data science department at that school must be phenomenal because some great tools are coming out of that place. So let's load the Titanic. I'm going to go to the Biostate, uh, Biostat uh, Vanderbilt uh, uh, University to get it. Uh, it's simple. And here it is, right? This is the, the Titanic, you know, the, the, the manifest of the Titanic. All the passengers that want to tie that Titanic gives you some information, their age, their gender, blah, blah, blah. And more importantly, whether they survived or not, uh, we know everybody who's seen the, Titan the Titanic movie, we all know the story. Uh, younger people and females survived, males and older people didn't, right? So it's, very, it's a very interesting um, data set for data science because it's clearly, there's a, there's a pattern that's obvious. And I oftentimes use it to calibrate my models to make sure my model is working well. So this is exactly what we're gonna do here. We're gonna load this in memory. We're gonna do a few things. I'm not gonna cover this too much than in other videos. We're going to take the, the cabin, we're only going to, um, we're going to re replace the NANs. We're going to, um, I think, uh, what are we doing here? We are, um, uh, there are some unknowns, so we're, we're, we're cleaning them up. Uh, we're going to basically strip first letter from cabin numbers. Uh, so, yeah, so basically here you see the cabin numbers. Um, they're unique, so they're not going to be very useful, but the floors are there, B, C, et cetera. So that's why we're just going to use that first letter. That's good to, for us. Uh, there is the, the male female is represented as sex here. It's not going to work for us. So we're going to assume fail, if it's female, it's one. If it's male, it's zero. We'll just, you know, choose one arbitrarily. Um, we're going to, uh, we're going to drop the features we don't need. We're also going to, um, uh, make the class. So the class is actually a number. In most cases, that's great. Uh, we want it to be a category. So we're going to force it to uh, first, second, and third. So a capo, you know, no, clearly knows it's a category. 
Uh, we're also going to kind of clean up the embarked and uh, impute the age with the mean. And this gives us this nice clean, let me run this so it's in memory. There it is. It's gonna give us this nice and clean data set, a lot more compact. We have the class, survived or not, age, uh, whether it had siblings, parents, the fair, the cabin, where they embarked and whether it's, uh, this person is a female or not, right? So very simple, very clean. This is obviously model ready because CapBoost can handle these categories, right? You wouldn't be able to feed this into, into XGBoost like this. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm loading the, I'm passing this to, uh, I'm, oh, I'm dropping the NAs. Yeah, it doesn't like NAs. XGBoost doesn't mind NAs. So that's a, a plus for XGBoost. Uh, we are going to, I'm going to pull the features. I like to do that. It's very simple to do. I'm simply saying, get all the features that aren't the outcome variable uh, so that we have this, this features. And we're going to use that features list at, in multiple places. So it's nice to have all that organized. Um, we're also going to pull the categorical features that you have to tell uh, Cat Boost what's a category. It won't know out of the box. So here we're saying anything that's uh, not a float is a category. So integers, uh, text, everything, throw that as a category. Uh, and then we are going to use our trusted train te test split to split the data set into two, 70% uh, for training, 30% for testing. We're going to set the random uh, random seed. We also tell it that our outcome variable is survived, right? We're predicting whether the person survived or not. So survived is one, not survived is zero. So we're looking for survival, not looking for death. That's the order we're looking at this. Here are the parameters for cat boost. I'm not going to cover this in great detail. It's a categorical, uh, uh, sorry, it's a classification model. So obviously area under the curve, a uh, few settings, and then you run this exactly. So I'm going to, and we're going to plot it so we can see it's always good, nice. It's always fun to see the plot uh, getting uh, built. So here, obviously you want to see the AUC, the area under score go up, right? If it stops going up, you want to get out. So here it's doing a great job at 0 0.845 AUC. Remember area, area under the uh, curve, 0.5 is random, one is perfect. So we're doing really good. We might be able to get the 0.6 maybe. Let's give it a chance. This is the fun part. Oh, it's starting to decrease. I think I'm running it too many, uh, too long here. I probably could re uh, reduce that time. Okay, it ran, perfect. Uh, and it tells you this best 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 test score, not the training score, is 0.85. So not bad. Um, so now we introduce Shep. You may have to inst install it if you don't have it. Um, and we are going also going to. Um, I don't have to need to do that capus because we already have it. So. The way you use a shop file, you say you pass it your model. Uh, you say, you know, you cat, cat model, cat underscore model, which is now our trained model. It's a model basically that has learned to predict survivability on a Titanic. Um, you say uh, cat model, get feature importance. So you're getting the feature importance. Uh, and uh, this is basically, uh, you need to pass it the pool of the test values, your outcome variable, and the features. It needs the features. If you don't give it the features, it's going to crash. And type shap values. Uh, then, you know, this, this basically, uh, the rest is, you know, you call SHAP, you, 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 insta you, 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 you in initiate it, it's, it, it's, it's JS, uh, and then you say SHAP.forcePlot, and we're going to get the plot, and this basically creates this SHAP uh, instance in memory. Here it is. Uh, so it gives you this kind of higher and lower outcome. I, I never I never really liked this um, this plot, so I'm not going to talk much about it. It always confuses me. I like is the summary plot. Now, this is what I really love. And look at that. Okay, now we have a, remember my other videos where I do a uh, variable importance using XGBoost, the, the var imp, which is a great tool, but this, my friend, is phenomenal. It gives us the, the coefficients, just like a simple regression model. Yet this is a classifier, tree-based classifier, which means it's non-linear. It's so much, such, so much more complex. If you've cracked open a classifier, you'll see all these trees of this, if that, and this, uh, you know, it's a nightmare. It's, it's a company that this simplifies it for you. So what do we see? We know that female is the most powerful variable for a Titanic. Uh, um, the, the, the females had a very high uh, ratio of, survive, of survivability. Males didn't, clearly. So what you see here, it, it gives you this cool little bar here. High is red, low is blue, kind of like hot heat. And um, on the uh, x-axis, it's the, uh, does it help the model uh, more towards what your, your positive outcome in our case whether you survived 
or negative outcome, whether you didn't survive. And on the y-axis, we have our features. They're in descending order, meaning that is female is the most important feature. And we see here that uh, is female is the most important. If is female member is one, so it's the value of one, the higher the value, red is more important for survivability. The lower the value, zero, which would be male, is uh, uh, it's for uh, the negative side, basically negative outcome. So more female, higher chance of surviving, uh, less female, lower chance of surviving. Class, same thing. The higher the class, uh, this is gray a little bit, so it's a little bit hard to see. It's important, uh, but we know the, the, the lower class, right, the, uh, uh, the lower number was, was first class, second class, or third class. First class was more important, and it's here. And this may be, the reason why we may not see it this clearly is because we, we may have done it as a category. This is very important. It can tell you the categories. It, it may have problems telling you the plus and minus part, which that's, in, that's interesting here. It would be interesting to rerun this model without forcing the categories to letters for a second and living to one, two, three. I bet you would see... Uh, uh, it would be blue here. The lower the number, first class survived, would be in a surviving section, and the bigger the number, third class, would be here in the uh, not survived section. Cabin, same thing. The fair, this is interesting. The red, the higher, the more people who paid, the higher price you paid, the higher chance of survivability, lower the less. Age, this is the, the inverse. This is interesting as well. The um, So the higher number, your age, so the older you are, the higher chance of not surviving, the younger, and that's true, it was the, the young, the children and the women survived, so the age was important, the older people, older men and women didn't, and that's why you see it there. So this is phenomenal, imagine this is a toy, uh, not a toy, a data set, it's a real data set, but it's, it's a very simplistic one. The SHAP files can handle huge uh, uh, size data sets. There was a presentation at Databricks where they, they did this in a distributed environment. This can really, really uh, bring transparency to your models and share with the people who are your customers, you know, oh, why is this feature doing this? Well, let's see. The model thought this was more important positively or negatively. It's huge. Okay, one more example. Let's do a, a regressor. So as you know, uh, Capboost handles both regression and uh, classification. Regression classification also does multi-classification. There may be some surviving models. They, it, it's, it, those tools are phenomenal. So we are going to load the Boston data set. So this is a classic, again, uh, the Boston uh, house prices data set. And the goal of this model is to predict the prices of a house in, in, of houses in the, uh, in the Boston uh, neighborhood. You'll see crime. There's a bunch of these, these very interesting uh, socioeconomic features, the crime, the age, the, the, the taxes you're paying, the amount of rooms, uh, the uh, lower status of the population, all these interesting socioeconomic uh, variables, which uh, obviously have a huge effect on uh, prices. Um, uh, here it even says, it looks like if you're Chaz, maybe if you're by the if you buy the, the Charles River in Boston. Okay, I'm assuming I'm assume Charles River would be a premium on your uh, on your rent. Okay, so, or on, on, the, on the cost of the house. We load it in memory. I'm not going to cover this much. Here are your variables. Uh, these are all, um, there's nothing to clean up. There's no NANs. This is a very clean data set. Uh, the only thing is there are, um, uh, well, let's look at the outcome variable. It's called MEV, which is the medium value of owner-occupied home in the thousands. So this is a regression. We're going to predict the in the thousands the price of a house uh, using all these features. Some features are um, uh, categories, and I'm going to show you a trick to, to easily do this. So we have to load the Bootcat Boost Regressor this time. We tell it our outcome name. Same things, I'm going to kind of pull out the features that we want to model. It's everything except a tax. I think tax was not important. That's why I removed it. I don't remember. And then we do the categories. This is interesting because here we're going to say a category is everything that's not, um, in this case, that's an integer. Uh, you're either an integer or a float. If you are an integer, uh, your category, if you're a float, you are a continuous variable. So this is going to give us the list of categories, and I print them out here. Chaz and Rad. So what is Chaz and Rad? Let's quickly look it up here on the list here. Uh, Chaz is a Charles River one, and Rad is the index of accessibility uh, to radial highways. Okay. Um, I'd rather be by uh, the river than the highway, but uh, oh, oh well. Uh, okay. Um, Let's see. So we're going to run the model. Uh, I'm pulling the features. Same deal, train test split. And here are the uh, variables for the uh, Catboot regressor. We pass it to the regressor, the Catboot regressor, and we regress, right? Okay, so I'm going to run this. Oops, I probably didn't load all the mem in the memory. Let me start again here. Make sure I have everything in memory. There we go. 
So it's an RMSC. Before we did the area under the curve, we want the higher value RMSC root mean squared area. We want the lower value. Thus, the graph is working great. It's going to zero. Uh, obviously, an RMSC of zero or root mean squared error, that means you have zero error on predicting a price of a house in the thousands. And it looks like we ran quickly here. Uh, let me make this a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more, more juicy. I'm going to uh, increase the learning rate. And load everything in memory again. There we go. Give it a little more chance to, to find little nuggets here and then. Here it is. It's running a little bit more. The learning rate was 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 too big. Okay, so let's we'll let it run. I ran. Okay, so now I'm going to load this into uh, the shape. So the shape shape uh, uh, um, program, as you can see, it can handle categories, uh, classifier, and regression, which is really cool. I'm going to show you another really neat thing about it. So again, it gives us the this this you know the flat plot. Eh. Uh, let's do the uh, summary plot much better. Here it is, high, low again. So LSTAT, most important feature, top of the list. Why is LSTAT? What is LSTAT? Uh, I forget already. It is percent lower status of the population. That makes sense. Um, meaning um, in our you know economic centric worlds, uh, the more uh, lower status people, the cheaper the neighborhood. Remember, we're predicting a we're, we're predicting a number, a a, a dollar sign, uh, and the higher, um, you know, the, the higher the value. So it's saying the the less lower status, the more expensive the house. The more lower status, the less expensive. And I mean, you know, poor neighborhoods, richer neighborhoods, obviously makes sense. The number of rooms, uh, that obviously makes sense. The more rooms, right, red, the more rooms, the more expensive the house. The less rooms, blue, the less expensive. Blah, 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 right? That always makes sense. And um, this is this is interesting here. Um, uh, here. The the uh, the x-axis is actually giving it giving you the, the 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 amount it's affecting the model in the unit of the outcome variable so here it is affecting so changing these let's say changing chas rad zn whatever you change it you you are affecting the price or you know an estimate of the the the, the price in thousands of the house this uh, x-axis is in the outcome variable. I think that's phenomenal, right? It's telling you, uh, you know, it affects, this thing is affecting by X amount the price of the house. Wow, I mean, this stuff blows me away. We've come a long way. When I was, um, uh, many years ago, we, uh, a friend of mine, we kind of wrote something a little bit like that where we could get the, the, the regression coefficient style from a classifier. It was a nightmare. Now this stuff is becoming ubiquitous. People are using it. I've seen papers uh, talking about these kind of charts, right? It's, it, it's, it's out and now it's easy. Um, this is phenomenal, right? It's a great tool to add to your tool set. Your customers are going to love it because it's no more, you know, they're not, they're not going to be scared anymore by, by using these weird, you know, deep, you know, Keras models or or complex cap boost models because now they can see exactly what's going on. And oftentimes it's going to make sense to them and they're going to totally trust the model, trust your advice. So there it is. So uh, again, um, let me talk about a few things at the end of my videos. I like to push some of my material. Uh, you can find my books. You know, I always have a bunch of books on Amazon. Uh, these are probably the two popular ones I have. Just simply put my name, first name, last name in Amazon, hit the return button, and you'll see my books here. Uh, you know, I have a bunch of them out there. Um, and um, the Viral School is 50% off right now for especially, you know, still, still some, of, some of us are still stuck at home. Uh, simply hit the classes button. And it will take you here to the different sections I have. I have machine learning track, market analysis track, entrepreneur track, and web makers track. All of them are good. Uh, uh, a lot of students have taken them, have got great feedback. Um, and this, for this type of class, I think the machine learning track, maybe the ML web makers track, talks a lot about cap boost, a lot about modeling, and a lot of pushing our models, our results to the web is something I always do. I always want uh, modeling, uh, not just an air, air, a score, but something that people can understand. Usually that means nobody cares about an uh, area under the, uh, under the curve, but people care about a dollar amount, right? So if you can explain things using SHAP files and then translate things into dollar amounts using a confusion matrix, people are gonna love you. Uh, and also I have a lot of classes on Udemy for free. So let's go back to the front page of ViralML School. Sorry, ViralML, ViralML.com, V-I-R-A-L-M-L.com. And uh, you'll see here somewhere I got my, here it is, 
my free Udemy classes. These are all free. They're a little shorter. Uh, and uh, uh, thousands of students have taken them on Udemy and have liked them. They've gotten some good feedback. So here we talk more about Cap Boost. We compare Cap Boost and XG Boost if you're interested in this. Finding actionable insights, that's huge. Uh, you want to be able to tell people not just a score, not even you want to go beyond the SHAP file. You want to give advice, practical advice saying, you know, this is how you solve this problem. This is how you solve this problem. And modeling can tell you that. And this is how I show you there. And also my latest was uh, doing auto encoder, finding actionable insight using uh, unsupervised and semi-supervised using auto encoder. So I really recommend all these classes. Thanks again for watching. Sign up for my newsletter at uh, viralml.com here in the upper left. And, uh, you know, please apply the SHAP file to your own machine learning and you're going to love it.